Welcome to our lecture online. You will find that taking the gradient in cylindrical coordinates is a lot easier than it is in spherical coordinates. So here we have an example. Let's say that our function, this is a scalar function, is equal to rho times the sine of phi. And here we have the gradient of that scalar function. Of course, the gradient will give us a vector quantity. Notice the unit vectors rho, phi, and z. All right. Notice we have to take the partial derivative with respect to each of the three variables. Here for the middle term we have a 1 over rho because after all, the farther out you go in cylindrical coordinates, the larger rho becomes and you want to make the change in the angle going around the z-axis independent of that distance and so therefore we have a 1 over rho factor in there. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the partial derivative of the function with respect to rho. So this becomes the variable, this becomes the constant. So we simply get the sine of phi. So this is equal to the sine of phi in the rho direction plus 1 over rho times the partial derivative of f with respect to phi. So this becomes a constant that now becomes the variable. So we end up with the constant phi times the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of phi, and that will be in the phi direction, plus the partial derivative with respect to, uh, with respect to z, but there's no z in that function, so therefore that becomes zero in the z direction. We'll just put it there for reference. Now notice that rho and one, 1 over rho cancel out, so this becomes equal to the sine of phi in the rho direction plus the cosine of phi in the phi direction plus 0 in the z direction. And that is how we take the gradient in cylindrical coordinates. See, told oh, you. Is that easy? Well, of course, we can have more complicated functions, but the concept is pretty easy.